So what 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 we'll be doing is that uh, we're actually supposed to uh, discuss the explanation or explain all of the uh, literally that actually happened, there, why and um, and what was done, what is done, and why we do what we do. The the system to discuss is a pulse oximeter. Now, uh, when, when, when a topic like this is given, or if I'm giving a topic like this, what I do first is to want to go to the internet and find out if, I mean, what it is, find definition. And uh, from what it's gathered, it's supposed to be a system that could uh, uh, measure uh, the, the rate at which, please, you are the guys at the medical people, please tell me, is it the rate at which the heart beats or the rate at which what happens, the pulse that they actually measure? Okay. Sir? Is it possible? The arterial oxygen concentration. Oh, the heart or the body? And the heart, the heart, the heart area, like actually. The body. The okay. oxygen in the heart, the arterial vein. Okay. Arterial vein, whatever. You know, I think you're going to come to this camera. So when you need to talk, you're going to teach that camera. So I so can, so can hear you well. Oh, 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 oh you know, bring the, the, okay. the microphone close. Basically. Basically. Yes. Basically. Okay. You kind of measure the uh, saturated oxygen okay. in the heart. Okay. Then at the same time it uh, detects the pulse rate. So that it's pulse rate is, is the number of time the heart beats. The number of time the heart beats yes. in a minute. minute. Thank you. So thank you. We are happy of the detection. So the pulse will be the number of time the heart we can say number of heart beats Pulses in a minute. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Right. <laughs> what did you say? It is? I said it's just plainly the number of heartbeats in a minute. Oh, the number of heartbeats in a minute. She, she said plainly. So let me then. Plainly the number of heartbeats in a minute. Heartbeats. Per minute. Per minute. Per minute. Per minute. So the minute will be 60 seconds, are we? Okay, uh, 60 cents. All right, so uh, then the the oximeter part. So, one of the oximeter part will be the oxygen concentration, are we? Mm -hmm. uh, so, the oximeter part will be oxygen concentration in the blood. In the blood. All right, so that's basically what we want to do. Good thing is that we want our results sent to a display unit so that we can actually make sense of it. So that's actually what the project is supposed to do. So, but to actually explain the, the electronic part of it or how the circuit design was, was arrived at or gotten at, we need we first need to come up with the block diagram. So the block diagram helps us uh, in this, uh, with this. So first we expect that our block diagram should have a power session. A power supply session. So, so, so power supply. It should have the mount controller. Uh, the mount controller should have a display, and then we should have the sensor. Uh, power supply is made available to the sensor. Power supply is not available to the display. Power supply is not available to the network. So this is what the block that I have to shoot. I mean, we did. The display is the LCD, right? Huh? Now, the display oh. session, the power supply session, the sensor. I mean, is it the LCD, the display? Yes, yes. Yes, we'll dip, all, of, all of that will be fine as we, the, as we continue to progress. And then we have the mount controller and its own circuitry. So it's each, each is a block. So what we'll do is to now begin to actually define each of those blocks and that's what says circuitries. Can I clean? Okay, let, let's let's take let's take the power supply first. From what we have, we have a, we have a terminal block. Uh, from the terminal block we have uh, Switch. The 
switch goes into into a voltage regulator. Then you have an output of the voltage regulator. The input of the voltage regulator is fitter. The input of the voltage regulator is fitter. And then you now okay. So this plus fiber. So this is what your circuit diagram should look like. Let me explain what I mean. This voltage regulator will be a seventy two five. Now, how did you actually arrive at this power supply in the first place? In power supply conservation, in power supply design, we start from the answer to the question in electronics. So before you design, you design a power supply, you need to know all the uh, constituents that that supply will be powering and at what rates those power supply will be needed at. When I mean what rate, what magnitude and the total amount of current that should, should, that should flow in the circuitry. Your power supply should be able to supply it. The display we intend to use is the liquid crystal display. It operates at 5 volts DC. The map controller is said that we are using operates at 5 volts. Our sensor operates at 3.3 volts. So we expect that our power supply should be such that can offer 3.3 volts and 5 volts. Are we close? Now, what it means is that in designing our power supply, we need to actually just go ahead and do that. Voltage is implied on the terminal block. So see this terminal block as your what? Battery. See this as your 9 volt battery. Now that voltage goes through a switch before it is then fed into a 7805. Your 7805 is a voltage regulator that supplies 5 volts to you only at one half, irrespective of the input voltage, so long as the input voltage is higher than the rated output voltage. It is not a voltage amplifier, it's a voltage stabilizer. What it means is that for this voltage regulator to work well, the input voltage must be, rated, must be higher than the rated output voltage. There are two types of voltage regulators. There are the variable voltage regulators, fixed value uh, of voltage regulators and the variable voltage regulators. The variable voltage regulators are the one we design using the LM713170. Uh, that was the circuit I was really, that was an add-on that I had to the, to the design after I first finished it. When I realized that the sensor would not work with fiber, it would work with fiber. So what I did was I built another supply around a variable voltage regulator with a variable resistor on board where I can tune to get 3.3 volts. But I later changed that, that design. So if 9 volt is here, the capacitor that is here is your 1000 microfarad 25 volts. And then the one here is your 100 microfarad 16 volts. The thing with a uh, electrolytic capacitor used for filtration is that its rated working voltage must be higher than the voltage across it. So if I have 9 volts, or I'm expecting between 12 and 9 volts on the input, the working voltage of my capacitor should be above 9 volts and 12 volts. So I have chosen 25. Now since the output voltage from the voltage regulator will not exceed 5 volts, I have a 16 volts rated electrolytic capacitor filtering the output. Such so that whether it's an adapter you brought here, or whether it's a, an, a, a, a voltage from NEPA, which is AC, that has gone through a transformer, a, a primary, and then it will step down at the secondary, and then it then sent into a voltage, uh, into a what, a bridge amplifier, or an half wave rectification, or a full wave rectification, and it has gone through rectification to DC. Of course, it's still going to have ripple. Those ripples, or that ripple, in electronics, we actually assume a ripple of one. To calculate for the capacitance value of the capacitor that should be here, your 1000 microfarad at 25 volts will best suit even for a 12 volt input. And then a 100 microfarad at 16 volts will best fit for a 5 volt uh, voltage rate. Understand that this part is what we call the VDD because this is where your positive 5 volt will be sourced from. 
So every time you hear me label any part, VDD, VDD, you understand that that VDD pin will be connected to the world, to the positive output of the world, voltage regulator. Here is either called the VSS or it's called the GND. GND is ground. Anywhere you see me label VD, VD, VSS or GND, understand that it is coming to the negative part of the voltage ring. Don't forget that ring is your battery negative part, the capacitor negative tag, the common of a voltage regulator. Don't forget this is the common, this is the in, and this is the out. And then to the negative part of the other uh, 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 capacitor. Do you understand? So that will be your VSS or your GND, and this will be your GND. Now, because we need 3.3 volt too, what we found out that is that there is another voltage regulator in the market that is 3.3 volt rated. All it needs is just feed it with an input voltage higher than the rated output voltage, and it gets you an output voltage. That voltage regulator was sent look up, from this point through another voltage regulator. This is to ground, and then its output also filtered with an 100 microfarad 16 volt. That voltage regulator is called the MIC. The MIC 29150 iPhone 3. Oh, that's 3. MIC 29150 that's 3. That would be the name. So it gives an output of 3.3 okay, so this one now um, is the one that is going to be sensor. Thank you. So this is where the sensor is getting this voltage from. So you can call it the sense view. Why this would be, or you can call it a uh, VCC. Call it your VCC. This is your VSS or your GND. And then this will be your VDD. So, your VCC will be what? 3.3 volts. Your VDD will be plus 5 volts. While your VSS will be the negative of them. You don't have a value. So no, 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 it's ground. The inputs. Thank you very much. The inputs coming from the. From the battery. Okay, so, yeah, directly from the switch, right? Yeah, no, after the switch, of course. Yes. After the, after the filtration. It's going to the. Yeah, the okay, after the filtration. Yes. Going to, going to, going to the inputs. Yes. So, what you will realize is that. The input of this 8 volt, 5 volt regulator mm -hmm. and the input of this 3.3 volt regulator are being filtered by what? This one mm -hmm. of the current mm -hmm. is Why? The output of the 5 volt is filtered by this. The output of. Is the, is the common coming from yeah, so the VSS? Is it joined to VSS? Yes, it's connected. Yes, yes, so it's joined. Yes, that's why you have this symbol there. Ground. Yeah. And this place to ask what? Ground. Yeah. Here to ask what? So here, 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 and here. Correct. That's the label. So that when you are reading a circuit that you have make sense. You know, it becomes wrong when I begin to now draw line from here to this place and there. So I just yeah. label it. So this is what your uh, uh, power supply should look like. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And I put it. Okay, square. Okay. Alright. So that means uh, that's what's going on. Variable regulator, what did you do? No, no, I didn't. I, I, the, the variable regulator is no more here. I didn't use it. Just get, you put a specific. A, 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 yes, an IC. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that looks like a transistor, a voltage regulator that will do the work. I see. Now, if I wanted to use uh, variable supply, I would have drawn the circuit diagram differently. This is what the power supply for your project is. So, let me just stop it there. So when we say power supply station, this is a constituent or a thing that constitutes the power supply. Can I continue? Right. Uh, another thing I will talk on quickly is the display. Let, let, me, let me just talk on the display quickly. Now, the truth is in digital electronics, when you hear VDD, VDD is 
five with this. When you have VSS and the GND diagram, but VDD can be given for any other voltage range. And, and then, but truth is, you can actually label them too. I can wake up and feel, why do I call this VSS? I can call it VNU. I can actually call it oxy voltage. I can call it any name. It's just a label. But understand that the moment you label this place, if you need it connected anywhere else, you have to actually give it that name too. So it's like I named it a bridge one, and I came here and I named it a bridge one. Internally, the system or your simulator assumes there's a wire connecting this end to this end. Instead of you drawing physical wires or physical lines and then making your circuit diagram rough. The LCD we intend to use, or the display we intend to use, is the LCD. The LCD is like a crystal display. The one you have there is the one that is 16 by 2. 16 by 2 would be the last two lines and can accommodate 16 characters. Now, it is alpha numeric, it's not graphic. It means you can only display alphabets and numbers and special characters. That's all you can do with alpha numeric. The LCD that we are using has 16 pins. 16 pins. Is that because of the 16 characters? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know. We have a 20 by 4. The 20 by 4 to add just 16 pins. So let's talk quickly on the pins. And uh, so that I mean, it's easier for you to actually tell you some reason why. Uh, the P1 is your VSS, followed by your VDD, followed by your V, DV or V, okay, I think it's V. Are they 16? 16, yes. Okay. Followed by your RS, your RW, your EM, your D0, your D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, your A and your K. So these are the names of the P. From 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Or 16 pages on your cells on your FC. This is the last 16 pages. Wait, D1, D2, D3, you know what I'm saying? Yes. That's 16 pages. Wait, look at this. Yes. Not this, the pins. Okay, yes. Is it? Yeah. One to sixteen. Okay. Uh, let me explain those pins quickly. It's because I've glued it. That's why it that looks like it's not good. Uh, I have one on board there. I will show you. It's 16 pins. Can you continue? Now, from what we've said before, let me go to the control. No, continue. Are you continuing? Mm -hmm. Because I have to ask you a question. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> no problem. After you do this, is it VCC is it or VT? I think that the, check it. What is it what was it called? Is it V or V? V. Emmanuel, what is it called? It should be V or V. It's V. Actually, your simulator is B, but on that on that LC is B. It's B. It's just nomenclature. But let let me. But it is consistent with every alpha numeric LC you find, whether it's 16 by 1, 16 by 2, 20 by 4, or even 20 or even 20 by 2. Are you following? Or any other one? Now, from what we had explained, we said the VSS and your, or your ground will mean the negative part of your battery. So if the first pin is VSS, what does that mean? It means you connect that place to here. So the other side of the VSS. That's just what I wanted you to see. So here is going here. Your VDD will then be connected to here. You not five volts. Thank you. It's your five volts. Thank you. So that's will be coming here. So it means this part should be coming here. To this place. Does it make sense? Yeah. Now, instead of drawing wires like this, is why we have those labels. And then, I don't see. Now, another, another, another quick one you should see again now. This part, please look at this. This pin 15 and 16 is your back lines. I 
And what constitutes the backlight is simply the light emitting down. Now, when you draw the light emitting down, make sure you have an arrow pointing out to signify that it's what it's giving a light because you can also have a photo that, that does what that takes in light. So you can just say the two pins are uh, the, the backlight pins. pins. Lights. The P A and K. Thank you very much. Don't forget that in diode we have both anode and, and diode. cathode. And cathode. So this will be your anode. And this will be your cathode. Such that the backlight is not just sourcing all the voltage available on your battery. What we do is that we place a register across the voltage BDD and the anode of the of the backlight. So what I will have done. This. I would have taken this anode through a resistor. Are you with me? In this case, I will have used a non random resistor, which is what I used. Why the cathode will have gone from here and connected to my world, to my BS6. Don't forget that's how back LED is later. Voltage to the anode, the cathode goes to the world, to the BSS or the negative of the supply. That is why, irrespective of whether it is morning, afternoon, or night, so long as the, LED, the light of the, I mean, the, the uh, liquid crystal display is on, you can see the characters on it because the backlight is on. If you remove the backlight, it will still work, but you will only be able to see the characters in the display only in the afternoon. When it gets dark, you will be able to see them, and it wouldn't make it look beautiful. So that's the backlight. So if you look at it, you're taking out two white, two, four, four pins. The VSS, the VDD, which of course is the supply voltage. We have taken out the A and the K, which is the pin 15 and 16, the anode and cathode of the backlight. Which resistor? How did you now the How did we? The resistor, is the resistor embedded inside the board? No, it's not. It's on the board. It's on the board. Yeah, look at the resistor. Okay. That's the random resistor. Okay. Can I continue? One last thing we need to discuss here before, before I get this apart. There is a pin called the B. This is your contrast control pin. Now, I'm sure you know what the contrast control is. It's what determines how bright the display is or how dim it is. If it becomes too bright, you won't see it. If it becomes too dim, you also will not see it. So you need to actually maintain an average. For the LCD, it is it is a fraction, it is a ratio of ground. Normally, it's supposed to be taken to ground, but not all the ground, not directly to ground. Its contrast control is to ground, but not all to, there is a fraction of the ground. So what we do is that between your VDD and your VSS, what we do is that we get a variable resistor and we take the control are you following? There is a 102. 102 what? 1 kilo. 1 kilo. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Ah, you know that? Ah, please. You just know my class is like this. I'll just finish the class in one week and say you can come and take certificates. Are you following? So, the a uh, variable register will be across your VDD. Don't forget your VDD is your what? It's your fi plus 5 volt supply. Your VSS is what? Is the negative of your supply. So the register is going to be across it such that as you vary this, you can see the response on the screen. The response will tell if you are okay or satisfied with how bright it is or how dim it is. That is what this very resistor is. Across, because the very resistor is going to have two points. I mean, three tags. The first tag, the second tag, and the middle tag can then go to your pin. So if you look at it, we have taken out one, two, three, four, five pins. Please, does that make sense? So if I were to draw that on the LCD, please look up. If this when the LCD, I would have to be this. I zoom this as the LCD. This is your LCD. My pin 1 will have gone to my VSS. My pin 2 will have gone 
to my video. My pin three will have come. Look at it. I'll be cross the VDD and VSS. And VSS. The control will have come to my pin three. And then my pin fifteen will have come through a resistor to my what? To my VDD. And my pin sixteen will have just come and attach itself to my watch. Do you understand? So this is how your pin one, two, three, fifteen, and sixteen will have been Don't forget that what is between your pin fifteen and sixteen is just what the light of the light. So we are taking out one, two, three, fifteen, and sixteen. And that's when you should understand that this piece does not have anything to do with the power controller. They are basically around the power section. Now, when I make this image, they do not touch. Now, let me let me talk quickly on the DO to the D4, G7. The DO to the G7 will be your data line. Oh, I call it your data line. So this is where the characters that you intend to display are sent to. Don't forget the characters are coming from here, from your manual controller. So which means this DO to D7, which are the 8 pin, you have to be connected to an 8 pin on to 8 pin on the manual control. For us, that is a lot of pins connected to the I mean that's a lot of pins you are taking from the controller. The fact that it's a manual controller, one of its disadvantages that it does not offer too many pins. Especially for those ones that are the DIM or the DIP, those ones that, that you can sit on the board. I have a of will be between 40 pins. At all in the 44 pins. The rest of them that are larger are uh, those ones that are spread around. Find those ones that are, that are like this. There are pins and pins and pins and pins. And I'm going to need the machine to sell out those ones. All those uh, odd glue, all the guys, all those fold guys, that's the machine they use in silver. Okay. Now, that's a lot to take from the control. But if you communicate using this method, this will look like the parallel way of communication. You remember those days where we usually had this printer with parallel ports? I think the, the printer parallel ports have about 32 pins. And you remember those, 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 those printer ports? You remember them? Then later we now have Syria, then we now have USB. Imagine how small the USB. But it is a, the, the difference between them is that the information that will have been sent at once using the Syria be sent sometimes two times, four times, or even eight times using the serial communication or the USB communication. It still has to be sent, but a number of times to complete the bytes. Are you following? Now, also, the LCD offers you four pin communication as against eight. Don't forget, this is the data line. This is the eight pin data line. It now offers you four pins between your D4 and D7. This will be your four pin. And that's what we used. So between uh, this was the SCD. So between your D4, D5, D6, and D7 were connected to your manual controller. So if this was your controller, these pins are connected somewhere on the controller. Are you following me, sir? 
what pin on the controller are they connected to? We'll get to that. We're still on the AC. So as against using the eight data line, we have used four. But that four is on what? D4 to D7. Does it make sense? What if we decide to use D0 to D8 or to D7? No, no, no. There is no condition for that. You are either using D1, D0 to D7 or D4 to D7. So you call this the serial because it's, 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 uh, it's 4 bits and data has sent in twice. So which means we take an 8 bit data, we send the first, it's called nibble, we send the first 4 nibble, don't forget 4 bit is called a nibble, 8 will be called a byte. In digital electronics, please look up, 1 bit, 8 bits, 4 will be called a nibble. So what happens is that you take the 8, Take the first four and don't forget in digital engineering we go from what from right to is it left to right or right to left? In digital engineering, it's right to left, so this becomes your least significant bit, and this becomes your most significant bit, depending on when if I'm facing with my now come. I mean, that's why in incrementing it to go from 2 raised to power 0, 3 to power 1. Three bars, so down, down, down to get to your two to pass seven. Have you? Have you? So you go from right to left. So this becomes your MS, your LSB. This becomes your most significant bit, least significant bit. Now, so what means is that we take an eight bit character or an eight bit data to send. Don't forget that every character you send, 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 every that's this, you start your zero down. It's analog. Uh, in analog. In analog, don't forget, in analog, you just be having the value represented in decimal. In like when I write 255 in decimal, if I was to write that in binary, I will write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So where you are writing 2 as a value, how would I have written zero ones? No, 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 no. One zero. One zero. Would be two. My three will have what? One one. And my four will have what? One zero zero. So this will be four. Now this can also be written either in octa or as hexadecimal. Hexadecimal will be raised to power what? Which what? Sixteen. Sixteen? Is it sixteen or twelve? Sixteen. Sixteen. Why octa will what? It's eight, thank you. So in digital electronics, values are not so much represented at decimal, they're represented as binary, octa, or hexadecimal. Now, if you have to represent as a exact decimal, you have to begin with zero x the value. So if I want to write one, that's going to be zero x zero. So this is one in the decimal. This is one in binary. With its leading zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Some compiler will tell you to write with B. What do you call this? This is semicolon or what? This is not semicolon. The colon. Apostrophe, I mean. B apostrophe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this will be 1. Why some will tell you just write OB? That's 0. B. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. So it depends on the compiler you are using, actually. In assembler, this is how you will have represented this in assembler. In binary, in C, you have represented it this way. But you could have also written it as decimal. Now, in assembler, if I was to write decimal, I will put dot 1 or D1. The assembly language we see this as one, dot one, or D1. Why the C will have seen this as either OB0001 or OB1? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Understand that this is how you communicate with the SO. So that will have taken out D0 to give for which is your pin 7 to pin 14. But we are not using the pin 7, we are not using the pin 8, and we didn't use the pin 9 or the pin 10. That's why that you see is blank. What we use is your pin 11 to pin 14 for the communication. But it makes sense. So that takes out the pin 7 to pin 14. So we are left with pin 4, 5, and 6. Quickly. This pin 4, 5, and 6, I refer to them as the control pins. The SD control pins. When I mean the SD control pins, this is what I mean. This is the pin through which you control, you send command to the SD. For instance, if you need to write on your book, say you are using pencil, and there's something already written on that book, what you do, you take the clean and you claim. It's the command you have actually, actually issued yourself. Claim, then write. These are the pins through which you do all that. The hardware is referred to as the set reset. The ROW is referred to as the read or write, while the EN is the enable display. And these are the functions. When you say you set, when you say set, what you actually do is that you are actually issuing a high to that pin. Your reset, you are issuing a zero to the pin. When you read, you are issuing a one to the pin. When you write, you are issuing a zero. When you enable, you are issuing a one. When you disable, you are issuing a zero. And don't forget, whether one, that one also represents a high, that I represent five volts in digital electronics. Please, do you understand? So when you hear me say one, a high, or a 5 volt, same thing, but you are not going to call 5 volts in digital electronics. You are going to either be saying a high or a 1. Understand that it's a data, it's logic states. So a logic state can only be two in digital electronics a high or a low, a on or a off. Do you, you understand? Yeah. So when I say a 1, I'm saying that the controller impresses a high voltage there, a plus 5. When I say it's a 0, it impresses what? A gram. At that point in time, when you read it to your gram, the risk continues. There are no resistance between it and gram. Said, said, said. Thank you very much. So this is what happens. Let me start with the read-write. You can write to the display and you can read from the display. But from all you gather, the mouse controller is the one that has the digits or the details coming from the sensor. So what it does is I've not done the processing. What it does is what? It writes to the SD. So at no point is the controller reading from the display. So if we never carry out this read function, it's always writing. So two things. You can either connect this to your controller and in the LCD library or in the LCD setup, tell it I'm not using read, I'm using only write. Or you can go ahead and grant this place yourself permanently. Let me explain this. What I'm just saying is that instead of using eight for data, we have used four. Instead of using three for the control, we can use two. Since we are not going to carry out what? read function is going to be right just grab that place. but when we are setting up our LCD protocol we need to tell it we did not connect the read write to you the read write has been taken to grand already so don't bother reading that page do you understand me okay so the read write is such that you can read to the SD or write to the SD and since all we are going to be doing is writing to the SD there will be no need connecting it to the controller you can just take it to grand because write operation requires that that pin be yes. taken to, to zero, so it will take place to VSS. So add to the pin that is going to VSS, the read write pin, which is the pin 5, is going to VSS. That is what was done on this point. If you look closely at your pin 5, this is your pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5. That's one in the middle. If you read it, it went to ground. Read it from here. You can see it from here. It went to ground. You want to drop it right before you come in. You look up from here. You shot coming from there. You see, you know what? So let, let, let me finish with the control pin. Mm -hmm. We have this now. We are back to you now. We are doing some control now. Now, so after taking the read write out, we now have the write, the set reset, and then we have the enable. Every time you are sending command to the SD, command like shift display. 
uh, uh, play the cursor at this line one or line two. Don't forget, I said it's a 16 by 2, which means you can start writing your character from any line, either between line one and line two, and on any column on the line. Please, do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, we we'll say. We say this is the SCD. It has two lines. That's 16. If I need to write my name, I said this is line one. This is line two. You can start writing from this point. You can start writing from here. Do you get it? We can start writing from here. Now, every time you need to start writing, you need to tell the SCD where to start from. That's the command you are issuing it. That is even before the characters will intend to... to that, that, is actually, that is even before the characters will intend to display a set. So, each command that, that are issued are issued between the set to set. This is what I mean. When you need to set those instructions or those commands, you reset the pin, you disable display, you send those things through the data line, those commands. When you are done writing the command, or you have issued out the command, the command line maybe move to line two or line one. When it's not time for you to now send your character, what you now do is that you now reset it, you send the information, then you do what? You enable display. The library, the SD library does it for you. You don't have to bother about doing it, it does it for you. There's an SD library that you call. That SD library is your LCD underscore INIT. It's your SD initialization SD, a, 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 a function that you call. It does it for you. The, the, the other file is the SCD.C. Every command that you will issue to the SD is in this command, including this SD.NIT. This library. You have to attach it. So all those commands and the functions and the pin manipulations, the bit, how the bit changes when you are issuing command, are already taken care of and go for you. In one of our classes, I'm going to show you, explain to you how the library is written, so you can write the library yourself. So that in event that you either attach it to a PIC, an art mail, uh, a Google Bomb Black or Blue, an FPGA board, a JSON TX2, or any one, even a, a Pixar. You can connect to them. any controller, any board, any firmware. Eh? I'm saying that the pin or the state of the set reset pin, the e enable this pin continues to change depending on when you are either issuing a command and when you are issuing what characters to be displayed. Please, do you understand? So, see the RUSRWEN as your control pins, see the DO to D7 as your what? As your data pin. Please, that doesn't just make sense. It makes sense. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. It's a so you watch the video again. No. Okay. You can always come come back for class so anytime. Mm -hmm. Can we continue? So that's that about the essay. That's the display. <laughs> you are tired already. Should we stop the class and continue at another time? So, yes. so when you want to impute uh, commands or something, yes. you will disable. Yeah, the display is disabled at that point. This, like I said, it's not you that is doing it. There is a function. Yeah, there's a function that is doing it for you. Just tell it you want to issue command right now. If command that you can actually issue are like you can clear the screen, you can go to line one, you can go to line two, you can hold the cursor, you can hold the cursor, you can say I want to start, I want to write at line one but at column two, at column three. If it's sixteen, because you can actually go see you're writing at the sixteenth uh, the sixteenth column. On either line one or line two, you can write that anyway. You know, those are the commands, basically. Basic command. You can shift the screen. You can shift the character in the screen. You can make the cursor blink. They are commands. So those are commands. But don't forget that at the end of the day, when you are done issuing command, it's the same pin where command are issued through that your character is also displayed through. So it is the state of this RSRW here that tells, is it a command you are issuing right now or characters? You know, just the way you use your calculator, you change the mode to set, then you come back from the mode to then make use of it. 
Then when you need to change the mode again, maybe to uh, algebraic uh, function or just you go to the sentence again, you change the mode. That's what is happening. So you keep changing the mode from command, from sending command, then to sending characters to the display. How about not complicated this task? Uh, you say yes. No, I didn't <laughs> Okay. So so that's that about the about the display. So, so we've taken out we've taken out the display. Uh, we've taken out the power supply. Let let's 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 take the mouse controller quickly and then we'll not take the sensor and then our class is over. Now on the controller I'd already I'd already give you all the hints. Actually, that the controller you are using uh, is a 28 PNIC. Now, for this controller to work appropriately or to work well for you, it's just 28 Sir? It's just 28 Yes, it's 28 PNIC. It's there. It's a 28 PNIC, is it? Now, for this IC to be made use of, it requires that a pin, one of the pin called the BDD, is taken to your plus 5 volts DC. You get it? It has a VSS pin that goes to ground. Its VSS pin are pin what? Pin 8 and pin 19. Its VDD pin is the pin 20. Then there's another pin called the MCLR. That MCLR stands for Master Player Reset. That pin goes through a 10 k resistor also to to your PDD. Are you following me? Trade thank you to the BDD. Look like. And then there are these other two pins. Now, I told you that's of the two VSS one master class. This is your master class set is your, your P1. Then that's another pin called OSC1. And I'm called OS2. Those pins come through a crystal resolution capacitor with another two starting capacitor, and they all came to the basis. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six pins that must be connected on this painted pin IC for the body IC can work. Let me take it again. It requires BDD to come up. If it gets VDD, it gets VSS. But it has two VSS, P8 and P19, at the VSS P. It goes to ground. That ground it goes to the negative of the supply. Your P20, which is VDD, goes to, to VDD. Your P1, which is your master clearance, it goes through a tank into VDD. If you don't take it to VDD, if you leave it floating or you take it to ground, the system will remain in a reset mode. It will not work. I mean, you see those systems that has reset. When you hit the reset button, what happens? They remain there. When you hit it quickly and you move your hand, it restarts the system again. So instead of having power ejected from all the boards completely, when you hop and hold, you can just press reset, so that only the IC is resetting. Every other sensor that requires light, that's light on board. Wait, does it make sense? Can I continue? All right, so, and then it requires that. Now, for you, Human beings who have heartbeats. We have heart that produces pulse. Even though our own is just for, is for taking blood, cleaning blood, and returning blood, and oxygen into the body. Now, you can stop your heart. I mean, I can say I'm not going to breathe right now. I can say move. For the mouth controller, every breath is a pulse that enables you to carry out an instruction. An instruction. And, it's, and it, it has an implication. On your controller, if you have heart, a four megahertz crystal. What the controller does is that it takes one all over four of the four million. Is what it uses to carry as one internal uh, internal work. So if you have four megahertz here, it's going to take one over four, which is what one megahertz. That's one megahertz. Is the frequency at which it executes a single cycle instruction. If I say stand up, that's a single cycle instruction. Sit down, that is a single cycle instruction. If I say, check if the police are there, go home or come back. If they are there, come back. If they are not there, go home. 
that's a two is a double side question because what you do is that first you go to share and then you can then make a decision whether to come back or to go based on the result of the question that is asked. Do you understand me? So that would be a double cycle instruction. But for single cycle instruction, the controller uses one megahertz. In time, which of course the period, the inverse of that is going to be what? One all over what? One megahertz, which is going to be 0 0.123451 second. If you look at it, that is one microsecond. What it means is that the controller will carry out 1,000, 1 million single cycle instruction in a second. Or it will execute each single cycle instruction using what? One microsecond. Okay, do you understand? That? That's the implication of this. Now, but interestingly, the crystal on your project is 16 megahertz. So it is going to be what? 1 all over 16, no, 1 over 4 times 16 megahertz, which is what? 4 megahertz. Are we? You said the one here is 16. Yeah, the one in your project is 16. How is it? It's written on the board. There's one I copied that day was 4. Yes. But you know, quite a lot of things has changed, don't forget. Oh, okay. Quite a lot of things has changed. Even really, what I'm actually discussing now is actually mostly pertaining to the second diagram that was sent before. It's easier to explain it that way. You know what? Let's try that out. I'm going to clear it for the record when I'm sending it to you. Where is it? This is the crystal resolution capacity. Okay. We check the what is written on the somewhere. You're going to see 16 for example. 16, I so if it's 16, it's 1 over 4 of 16, which is 4 megahertz. The inverse of 4 megahertz would have been what? Please, I trust your answer. I don't trust that guy. So, <laughs> so that is how much time is spent in carrying out the single cycle instruction. Now, this crystal digital capacitor does not always start on its own. We are going to need these two ceramic capacitors to start it. The ceramic capacitors around it, you have seen them, are 22 picofarad. So you know you know this wine that is in your listener generator, you wine, 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 then it starts to work itself. How is the capacitor is doing? So when you apply voltage to the system, they wind the pressure of the capacitor to start generating the pulse, then they go to sleep. So that's why they are called starting capacitors. Both the ceramic both the, the ceramic capacitors, capacitors and the crystal capacitor are example of non-polarized capacitors. They're going to be two types of capacitors, polarized and non-polarized. The polarized are the electrolytic or the tantalum. Those ones that are positive and negative. And you see, while I was drawing them, I was going to have drawn those ones like this. Electrolytic. For the ceramic, it would have been this. For the crystal electric capacitor, it would have been this. So not the difference. Electrolytic, ceramic, crystal electric. If you go for interview and they ask you how to do this one, you just say I'll give you this expo. So what's this one is electric? Electrolytic, ceramic, crystal electric. Oh. The other ones, if you decide to to pick my call to see my face again, I'll tell you that ones. Yes. All right, I'm going to see. I'm going to show. No, they don't. They, they are non polarized. They are example of non polarized. All of them they are just power the crystal. Sir? They just start off the. No, no, no. The ceramic are not that start off the crystal. You know what I'm saying? The yes. ceramic. Yes, they just start off the crystal. And they are not polarized. That's why you see me draw them one, 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 one like this. This time, the other time, I flipped it on the horizontal. Okay? Okay. So, this first is what is subtracted from the 28 pin you have. Six is gone. That is why what is left will now be what? The 22 people that will be paid from the 28. So that's how I can tell you that the IC is a 22 people that will be paid, even though it's a 28 in IC. Inside the IC, that means 18 and, and yes, 19 and 18. I'm going to grant. Why 20 goes to VDD, one goes to Master Player Reset, then this is going to be your P9 and 10. The OSC1 and the OSC2. 
Does it make sense? Now, couple with your couple. Now, couple with your ROS, ROW, we omitted uh, ORW, EM, D4, D5, D6, D7. So, all these are actually on your port B. Your controller has three ports, port A, port B, and port C. So these are actually on your port, uh, port B. Port B is Sir? Port B is Yes, yes, No, 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 no. Yeah. I said the 22 input output pin are shared between yes. port A, port B, and port C. Where your port A has only six pins. Your port B has eight pins, and your port C has eight pins from the 22 input output. So if you do six plus eight plus eight, you're going to get 22. So then the port A is this one. What are the port A pins? That's what it's asking. The port A pins, the port A pins are going to be your RWA B zero, RWA B two, RWA B two, RWA B three, RWA B four. I believe it's fine. Let me tell you that pin assignment, that pin numbers. Seven pin from my controller goes to the SD. You have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why for your port C? For your port C, it's going to be pin 11 or pin 18. So you have ROC0, ROC1, ROC2, ROC3, ROC4, ROC5. ROC6 and ROC7. This is pin 11, pin 12, pin 13, pin 14, pin 15, pin 16, pin 17, pin 18. Now ask you, where did your sensor now connect to? Your sensor, let me say that to you, so I'm branding all right. Please, can I connect this? Your sensor is the Max 3100. There's another one called the Max 3102. From all that is gathered, these guys communicate to the map controller using a communication protocol using called I2C. Intra, inter, something. I'm not sure. But you can double it. I forgot it. No, that is intra, intra, maybe second point, intra, intra, something. Some people call it I2C, some people call it I2C, some call it I, IC. It's the same thing, I2C. Now, for I2C, what the beauty of I2C is that it uses just two line communication. The 
the SDA SCA. The SDA will be where the data is sent out from. The SCA will be where it is clocked. It is a synchronous data communication. There are two types of communication that you're going to be talking about in digital electronics: the synchronous and what asynchronous. For the asynchronous, can I continue? For the asynchronous, it is clocked and data is sent. So it's like you're having a start bit and then end bit. That's the asynchronous. For the synchronous, you clock, data goes in. You clock, data goes in. You clock, data goes in. So in the synchronous, a clock is followed with the data. So if it's not clocked, the data at the bus will not move. So the data is left on the bus, then it is clocked. Data is placed on the bus, then it is clocked. But for the asynchronous, it is clocked first, which means there's a start bit, there's a clock, there's a start bit, then there's your data, then there's a stop bit. It's That's his asynchronous, thank you. But of course, this evidence for synchronous and asynchronous, so you now share the textbooks in school, it is the other way. So for you that is not going to school, I didn't teach you, teach you your book well. If your teacher says it the other way, it's the other way. You need that GP. Okay, I don't know what because neither the other person. But they said possible to the blood in the club. Yeah, that was it. So it's not what I said now. I'm just saying, please, it's what they said is you should share. Don't be like me. Alright? So let's back to our class. Oh, oh, not lost you. Do you follow this one? Eh? It's the SCA. The data is the SD. Is it sorry? Oh, there's no phone there. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. See that? The cloud goes on. Can we continue? So I'm saying that the I squared C offers you two data communication. The beauty of it is this every module has an address. So let, let, let me explain to you. Assuming this is your microcontroller. And this is the SDA pin. This is the SCA. You can have a module. You can have another module. You can have another module. Uh, SD, SCA. SD, SCA. SD, SCA. But the issue is that these modules will have different, what they call, address number. If you pick up the DS1307, it has a different address. It's an I square C. A uh, real time block calendar is has a, it has a different uh, address. If you pick up uh, a Syria E Pro, like the 24FC256, it has its own address. Also, your IC, that is the Max 3100, it has its own address. So, the three of them can be communicating using the same communication line. But every time I'm supposed to start a conversation, it likes calling a name. Before I say how are you, or calling your name before I say how are you, or calling your name, your name or her name. Do you, do you get it? Now it is whose name is called that responds, even though every one of you can hear what I just said. They share the same serial box, but at the point of communication, they have different addresses. Do you get it? That's the beauty of the ice cream. Do you get it? So you can have different. Uh, modules connected to the same serial box. Except that each one would have an address. So when I'm interacting with this one, I'm interacting with this address name. When I'm interacting, I'm interacting with this address name. When I'm interacting with this, I'm interacting with this with this address name. How that is done in programming is a different level of issue. I mean, that is done differently. But to understand that is just the basic feature of beauty or advantage that like that you can see two line communication of us. Now, so your Max 232, you have the SDA, you have the SCL, then you have this VCC, where positive voltage comes in. That's where your 3.3 volt comes in. It has a VSSP that is connected to ground. It has another pin called the INT. Of course, INT in programming will be an internal pin, but it's not used. So the only four lines that were used on that Max 232 are the word VCC, where 3.3 volt goes to. From that our 3.3 volt voltage regulator, the BSS that is connected as a uniform to both 
that voting regulator, the 7805, and every other uh, module requiring VDD, then the SDA and the SCA. On the microcontroller, where is that SDL and SCA? It's on your port C. It's on your port C, ROC4, and ROC5. 4 and 5. That's where it is. You get it? So your SDA will be ROC4, and this will be your ROC5. This is the SDA, this is the SCA. So only two pins were used on the ROC. No pin was used on the ROE. The rest of the pin were used on what? On port B. So this is how the max 3100 communicates to the mount controller and other secretaries involved in the creation of this wonderful, beautiful system. What is the difference between that 3100 and 3100? I think one of the... Uh, I had it already for the difference actually. Since I got to the market to buy it to use uh, this thing. You, 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 you can read it up. Uh, I think better than I have to say this. <laughs> I'm supposed to actually provide it. But I know one very good difference is that the 3102 uses 5 volts. The 3100 uses 3.3 volts. So that's, 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 that's how the system was actually created. Uh, is that the the, the code. Uh, I'll give you the code. I don't want to explain that now. Actually, this is the code. Well, let me do a small explanation so that the uh, game we can continue to be big and continue to learn patience. I'm guessing that you seriously are. <laughs> no, but you know, no, it's, it's good for me. It's good for me. Please, it's good for us. It's good for us. It's good for me. Okay, so this is the system. This is how it comes up. Um, what is this? Okay? So by placing my... So I can just start reading something. What's the problem? Okay? So that is just... No big deal. No the, big deal. The VPN is what? It's a bit per minute. Everything. You can, you can test. It's on. Don't have to test. Now, let me say one of those things quickly on the code. When you pick up a microcontroller, apart from uh, uh, fulfilling the power condition, there's something you also need to fulfill. It's called the port pin direction condition. I will explain. Pins on the mount controller can either be input, output, or bi-direction, which means they can be input, they can be output, and they can be input and output at the same time. There's a communication protocol on the PIC that is called one-wire communication, where you communicate using one wire with the sensor. An example of a sensor you do that with is the DS1307. Uh, it's a temperature and humidity uh, 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 sensor. The way it works is this. For instance, if I need to tell you if I need to ask, what is 2 times 1? What I need to do first, I will, we have one line of communication. So I send the information to you. At the point I'm sending information to you, I make myself, the map will make itself an output pin, and send the question to you with a clock. The moment the, the information gets to you, the controller makes itself an output pin again to receive the answer from you. Do you get it? So at the point my controller is sending information to you, it's an output. By the time it's to receive the information from you, from you, it makes the same an input. So it's bi directional. Other times, it is input or output. For instance, your data. The data that is coming from the MAX 3100 is going to the mouse controller's input. Why the mouse controller is the one that is clocking the MAX 3100? Uh, Please, you understand it. So the clock pin on the controller is output. The S, the data pin on the controller is input. How did the controller know this to do that? There is a register called the trice register. That trice register 
is where you set what pin will be input and what pin should be output. And every port on the controller has its own tracks. So port A will have tries A. Port B will have tries B. Port C will have tries C. Now, on the tries, inputs are giving a 1. Outputs are giving a 0. So look up. If this were the pin of the controller, assume this is my port C. Don't forget, my port C is going to have
It is in that other file that everything about this IC resides. So first of all, when you set up your programming uh, 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 workspace to write, you will have to actually have this other file. To have this other file, the instruction is hash include 16f8768.h. This is how you add this. It's a must. The other file. The next thing is that in your program workspace, I told you that your program you are going to have your project dot C, you're going to have your project dot H, and going to have this IC you are using the same, which is the 16 A dot H. These are the three files that the three files that will be created for you. You have to create them. Now this is different. The compiler, the manufacturers of the compiler have already had this file created, organized for you. So that the moment you call this other file, it attaches it to your workspace automatically. The two that you have to work on will be on your C and on your H. It is in your H that you have to include this 16 cc so that in your C, you now include this H. So first in your C, I'm also going to have hash include greater than sign project dot H. You're going to have this attached. So that in your C, you have this. Are you following me? One is making sense. That other is me. I mean, so in your H, you have the hash include 16f8768.h, which is this, it's attached here. And then this, in your C, you now call the H file of the project. So that this and this are now available. It doesn't make sense. So that's the first. Now, in your H file, or in, in your C, let me back. This. It's programming, so let's do a bit. Let's see how we can discuss programming on the board. Ah, okay, let's run. Uh, in your workspace, in your C, like the other is about to go up, you? you are going to have your void, main void. This is the start of every C programming code. The void main board. You can either have it as void main board or void. Sure. Okay, let's let's run. So I'm saying that in your dot C will be this file or this function code for you. In C, there are four types of functions that you are going to see. And these are the very important information that we ask you if you need to discuss programming. So don't get tired now. Even with that understand it. just write what you can write but it's important now there are four types of uh, functions you're going to call first of all there are the functions that does not return a type and does not take in any argument or parameter they don't return a type they don't take in any function any argument or parameter so this will be an example first the void the second one will be the void, the one that does not return any type, any type but takes a parameter. Thirdly, there will be the one that returns a type, returns and does not take parameter. The fourth one will be the only one that returns a type. And the one that takes parameter. And the best and easiest way to explain it is to actually give an example. So we mean I have to actually say something else, create a system, just write a function, and then show you how it goes. Uh, well, I'm just trying. Just try. But please look up. To create a function in C, or well, the reason why functions are created in C is that I'm going to explain. Apart from your main function, as is created, where your program is written, which is your void main void, 
is your standard is like the start of the program. That's the first kind of function you're going to find in C. And you find it in any C program. There's no one you're not going to see. I expect that you should have seen something like this before. It should not be new. Void, main void. Some of them allow you to put in the void here. Some of them allow you to leave it blank. It's the same thing. So it is in this. So, so this one will just be an example of the first kind of function we're going to find. It is in this function that you write your code. The first thing you want to do when you come in here, before you even go into your tri-state register, is that you need to first of all clear all the pins and ports you, are, you intend to use, such that they don't come up with any initial value in them. So first, the instruction will be to clear for the, you just see, I'll put underscore A, the value you intend to clear with, which is a zero. I'll put underscore B, is zero. I'll put underscore C, is zero. All I have done here, I've said write zero to Port A, Port B, and Port C. It's the same thing as saying clear all Port A, B, and C. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it's a digital IC, the, the, the bits or the signal magnitude it will give will be a high or a low. A 1 or a 0. A zero volt or a five volt. So when I write a clear here, that clearing uh, 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 function I've done, or that clearing uh, operation that I've tried out, is simply say write a zero to the port. The next thing I'm now going to do is to set the tri state. So, and I told you to set the tri state. What we are doing there is that we are telling which pin is input, which pin is what output. We we'll do that in the tri-state register. And each of the ports has its own dedicated tri-state register. It's why we have tri-z, we have tri-b, and we have tri-c. But if you look at our program, we have nothing to do with port A. So there, I don't see any reason why I should actually even bring this here in the first place. And I don't see why I should address tri-z. But I, I'm not using it. But I know I'm addressing port B and port C. Port B is where my SCD is. But C is where my sensor is. The question you could have also ask is, why can't the sensor be kept on the other three pins on port B that we didn't use? No. This IC requires that it communicates with the I square C pin on the microcontroller. This is what it means. Why the pins on the microcontrollers could be input and output, why they are basically used for input and output operation. The each pins or some pins that have other functions they carry out. For instance, and this is key. When I told you that in using the mouse controller, the MCLR pin is taken through a 10 key register to VDD. What I didn't tell you is that that pin is also slashed with a VPP. What is VPP? This is a programming voltage pin. This is what it means. At a point, when I'm done writing the code, I transfer the code into the IC to make the IC go into a programming mode or a flash mode. I need to impress a very high voltage, higher as high as between 13 and 15 volts on this pin. The moment this pin sees that voltage, because that voltage is far higher than 5 volts, it understands that I want to actually flash this content. So what does it do? It transforms or it switches to the flash mode. But the moment I am done flashing my code into it, what do I need to do? I need to withdraw that voltage from it so it knows I'm not flashing it. Then I now need to tie it through a tank to build it to tell it I want to use it. But if I then also need it to reset, need that same controller to reset, what I then need to do is allow me to bring in a button here yeah? and through that button I can take this place to my VSS so that when that button is pressed what happens so it's going to be this one 
What happens is that the master clear reset is taken to VSS. The moment you take this master clear reset pin to VSS, the controller simply restarts. This is what I intend to say. I say that that pin has carried out three different functions. First, it has, it is where the VPP voltage is impressed to tell the IC that you want to put it in the what? The flash mode. Secondly, during that state, yes, it's not in use. We do not attach that the resistor will be there, but it will not be powered through the resistor, it will not be powered through the same. That is why I really, 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 if you look at it in the design, what you are going to find is that there is, from VDD there is a resistor, through a signal diode to this place. This diode will be your 1N4148, this will be your 10 kilo resistor. So that when your, when your programmer impresses that 13 plus 13 volts here, that voltage will not be able to go to the VPP line. What happens is that this dial blocks it. But when it's time for you to use it, the VDD through this 10 resistor, through the signal diode comes in. So that if 5 volts was being applied here, when it goes through this zona diode, I mean this signal diode, the signal diode takes just 0 0.6 from it. So that what you have on this master clear is 4.7 or 4.4 volts. Uh, volt. So at that point, the master clear set has served three purposes. First is where the VPP voltage is applied to put the, system, the controller in a flash mode. Secondly, it is where it is attached through to the VDD for you to use. If you then need to reset it through a button, that same matter can reset and then we take it to VSS. It's kind of three functions for you. Are you following me, sir? It's check one. Let me tell you another thing. For the controller to be flashed, please, this is key and very important. There are other pins that play a role. Your VDD plays a role. Your VSS play a role. There are now these two other pins that play a role. The clock and the data. The clock should be your ROB6. I believe the data should be your ROB7. Now don't forget, your ROB6 and 7 is where your D6 and D7 of the SCD is attached to. At that time, when it is being used by the SCD, it's an output pin. At the time when you are flashing the code into it, it is not an input output pin. It is the clock. At the same time, it is the data. Please, do you understand it? So what I'm trying to say is that pins on the mouse controller carry out more than one function. So you have to understand when it is being used as an input output operation alone, or when it is then being used for any other special function that it offers. Do you understand? So also is your ROC 3 and 4. Is it 3 and 4 or 4 and 5? 3 and 4. The 3 is your clock for the high The ROC 4 is your what? It's your data. So at that point in time, they are not just the input output pin that just sends a high and a low. They are now communication pins. So it is the communication part of it that is being used at that time, not the input output operation. Emmanuel, hey, does it make sense? It's a uh, shadow. Do you understand this? So, even though we had made one input and made one output, the operation that is carrying out is not that of just the input output, it's that of the word communication. Synchronous communication. So, back to what we're doing. I just need to just explain that quickly. You can't do it again, I mean. At this rate, I might not see boss. I fear for myself, so we'll try. We'll try. So, I clear port B, I clear port C. The next thing is to set the port address or duration. So, I will say. What is that instruction? Please give me the instruction. To set the tries. Set the tries. Thank you. Set underscore tries underscore B or B. So we are fine out. Our B is also supposed to be word output. So we just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Don't forget, every instruction was held with a semicolon on C. For the C, set underscore tries underscore C, OB. Now, we are not saying there's one that needs to be input. Which one has to be input now? ROC4. Has to be input because that's your data. So you have 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So this is what you write for try C. This is what you write for try B. What I've done is that I've said try bit 0, 1, 2, and 3 are outputs. Bit 4 is input, which is where your data is for the computation. The rest are outputs. This is the instruction to set input output. So the question you have asked me, what have we done in the program? It will be difficult to teach everything, but these are specific uh, 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 functions or specific operations that we carried out. We collect the port, we set the direction. The next good thing we do is that we collect the ports again. So you are put on B is zero. You are put on on C is zero. It's clear. This is the first thing. If I need to light an LED, I will do that. I have an indicator on it. I need to light an LED. For instance, the LED on the backlight. If it was not attached to power directly, it was attached to a map program. As zoom, it was attached to say my port C0. And I need to light it. What I would do is that instead of actually writing it the way that I would have written it now. I will first of all go and name it. That name is what's going to be done in my system in my project of H. Where I'm going to have, if I'm going to give it to me, hash define, I call it power led P yeah. underscore C0. So, then when I need to use it in my project of C, then I'm going to see I'll put what? A high or what? Power.lit. Then it lights. We are talking about delay there. For you to use delay in your dot H, you need to, you need to bring in the delay function or the delay library. How to bring a delay library? Hash use delay open bracket clock equals 16 meg. This is how to bring in the delay function. After bringing the delay function, if I now need to have the five second delay that you talked about, I will say delay underscore millisecond 5000. Because in C, the delay function can offer you three variations. You have the delay underscore micro, delay underscore milli, and delay underscore cycle. So, I'm going to really, really going to have to stop at this point. For now. The clock 16. Uh, yes, that's 16. the system data we use. Okay, 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 okay. So, this is the high delay. If this is not there, then you can't use this delay. We are calling it from? From this function. But to bring it is the hash use, not hash include. Then, the library that was used is function, is library also needs to be added in your, in your project of C. That will be hash, is it hash include? Yeah. LCD.C, that's to be used. So that in your initialization, I forgot. After clearing it, you now need to say LCD underscore NINT. This is how you call the library. Yes, because this is a function. What that means is that in this header file that you have brought in, or this source file you have brought in, this function is there. And if you look at it, it does not return anything. It does not take in any parameter. That's what I'm calling that. So this is an example of a function that does not return anything and that does not have anything. I is a function created. It's return type.
the function name thirdly will be if it's taking any argument or parameter so if it's void here it'll be void the function name will be what s to the underscore initialization the return type is void so here also we're going to void so void std underscore nit void how do you clear the std script we are going to ask you that how do you clear it how do you go from line one to line two it's very important let me give you those functions even if you don't even write anything let's try this one guys okay so how do you clear the std script this is the instruction please give it to me that's the word Clear. LCD underscore to clear the LCD. LCD underscore put C open bracket um, uh, forward slash backward slash L. 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 This is how you clear the SD screen. That's the instruction to clear the SD screen. If I need to go to line one, it's going to be LCD underscore put C. Give, it, give that to me. Is it put C? Put C. Is XD go to? If you want to change the line, yes. go to XY. XD underscore go to, go XY. to XY, comma 1, comma 1. Line 1, comma 1. For line 2, it's going to be XD underscore go to XY, comma what? Is it 2, comma 1 now? Right? Or 1, comma 2? Line 2. If I need to print something on the SD, say for instance I need to write uh, 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 a not changing character, say I want to write the uh, word comma, what I would have done would be LCD C open brackets word comma. But that will be after I either change the line, after I either clear the screen, or I'm determining which of the line I want to put it on. But if I have a variable called shadow, and in that variable I have written say 25 in it. Now before I can create a variable called shadow, I must have determined what the bucket size is. In C, the smallest bucket size you could have printed will have been the one bit bucket size, which means the only thing it can contain will be a zero or a one. You are going to call that kind of bucket size the short, short shell. So shell will not be able to contain any value other than what one or zero. If I said signed, say unsigned. Int 8 shell. What I've done is yeah, I've said the bucket size will be an 8 bit bucket size. Shell. On sign, which means positive integer 8 bit container. It means if it's 8 bit, it will be able to contain value between 0 to what? 255. A total of what? 256 size. But if I remove this on sign and I made it sign, Shell is still an 8-bit value, but instead of containing value between 0 and 255, no, it will not contain between minus 127 to plus 127 because it has capacity to not contain negative half of the 256, positive of the 256 because it's still what an 8-bit integer. Why? Because it is signed. If I return the word unsigned. Then it will only load between 0 and 255 because the sign value or sign will not be able to take what negative integers. Please, does it make sense? So just if I have sign or sign for int 8, I can have for int 16, int 32, int 64, and a floating value. For int 16, it will only be able to hold up to what? 0 to what? 65,350 watts. something. I know that for the 10 bit it's going to be 1024. I can't see for the 16 bit. Believe? The 16 bit? No, you said 256. Is it 127 or 128? Eh? I 
get that part? Minus one to a Yes, for the, to for, one. for the side is eight. Okay. So it's going to be minus one to a seven plus one to a seven. The unsigned of eight will be zero to two fifty six. The unsigned for sixteen will be what? Zero to sixty five thousand three hundred and sixty something or fifty something. The unsigned we have of it on the negative, then to the positive. That should be minus thirty two thousand something. Yes, you get it. So this we are my with it. If I created a an unsigned channel and I initialize it or initiated it or I give you 25 and I need to print it on the SCD, I'm not going to write it like this. The way it's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be printf open bracket LCD put C. Comma, shadow. I need to bring it an upper sound what? Upper sound to you. This is the SD format string to display 25 as a shadow. There are different other formats. There's the upper sound U, there's the upper sound LU, there's the upper sound F, there's the upper sound uh, G for the truncated floating point. The point is, there are several ways characters. Especially changing characters are displayed on the SD. This is just. That's for instance, you're talking about. Is it for you to like, display or listen to this? No, to display this number. Because this BPM is a, is a register. This SPO2 is also a, a register. The content of the register is what is displayed here. So display the content. Because don't forget that content keeps changing. But because it is the content that it is showing, is why the value can keep us changing. But the part where it is not displaying the content, where it is displaying constant strings, unformatted strings, is why this BPM does not change, SPO2 does not change, As this colon 2 does not change, the, uh, greater, uh, the percentage sign does not change because they are what? They are constant information. So it's a mixture of both words, this and this. Again, you can check formatted strings, or uh, it's on Google, just. Let's pick up some of these ideas and things we've we'll set to it and then run it up and then you have something to say. I beg to actually close that. And then you just actually do it. I still have four hours to try. Please. So, um, for what you, yes, you can stop the record.